Hey everybody, welcome in. It's Friday. It's having day. It's going to happen, at least in my time zone, 419, but in UTC, 420, which is a type of sailing vessel. And it's been a long year so far. Uh, and especially with these all these ETFs and these updates. But thank you all for coming. Hope you like it. We're going to talk about what happens next. A lot of people want to pack their bags and go home. They think it's done. I will prove to you with about 40 data points that it's not done. We still have a very bright future ahead of us. Crypto market cap is $2.33 trillion. Volume $112 billion. Thank you, Bill, out there in Switzerland. Bitcoin price is hovering around $64,400. $64, and what else? Fear and greed, 66. Lots of 66s, lots of 68s today. We're going to break it all down. Let's go. And a shout out to the new members on Patreon. Bunch of subscribers just called out that they joined Patreon in the live chat. Ruben Kujit, Ed1984, uh, Hozu Brendel, Victor Hall, Glass77, Vicky Barna, Ben Young, CC, and Frank Lozano. Thank you so much for being part of the family. Bitcoin only playlist is here. By the way, some browsers don't show the playlist on the video. So make sure you're using Chrome and it'll pop up. Um, and we have six hours to go. Six hours. And you all know what the having means. But we're going to break it down exactly what it means too. Thank you so much, Mike, for coming as well. But literally, as the price of gold goes up, they dig deeper and get more of it. As the price of Bitcoin goes up every four years, they cut the supply in half. It is a nasty supply shock. And yesterday I did say, I thought 63K shorts were on the menu and boy, did they get eaten. Thank you as well, Mr. Hammer, for joining us. We smashed through the Bitcoin shorts, but it was a very volatile night. I'm not going to dwell on this, but this chart basically says it all. I was watching the markets and I was prepared to buy the dip. And that's sometimes what you need to do. But the rebound, not only was it rapid, but it went higher. And that's all I'll say on this matter. What is crazy though, and really to put things in perspective about where we are, where we've come from, what we've gone through just this week, I'm going to break it all down in a couple of little bullets. And this is inspired by Alistair. And shout out to Sanjay as well for bringing it to my attention. First of all, Binance liquidated hundreds of millions of dollars worth of Bitcoin to establish its SAFU fund in USDC. They were a big seller of Bitcoin this week. We had the US tax deadline on April 15th. It prompted a lot of individuals to sell their Bitcoin to meet tax liabilities because of gains. We had tensions in the Middle East. I won't go into that. Tit for tat, hitting each other. Hopefully that's all quiet and down now. Hopefully smarter minds will prevail, and I think that's the case. And finally, investors took profits in anticipation of the Bitcoin halving, thinking it was a sell the new strategy. And despite this, Bitcoin's at $64,500. I mean, boom, 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 boom. Tough week, and it's hanging tough. So I was actually going to call this video risk off, but no. I didn't. Now, another piece of shocking truth as well from friend of the channel, James Levish. Uh, while every single fiat-based currency softens through endless expansion of its supply and debasement of its value, today marks the day that Bitcoin hardens by cutting its production in half and further strengthening its base value. As I say, fiat and gold soften and Bitcoin is going to Double its hardening in six hours. Double. There is no asset that does this on the planet. And you're lucky enough to be part of it. Now, let's look at the Bitcoin having fib spiral. I added a little green arrow in a box to where we are. And this is the sequence of how it goes through. And this is part of the beauty of Bitcoin is the having cycle. And this is what we're going through in six hours. We're going from 6.25 Bitcoin to 3.125. You heard it a thousand times. But when you forecast forward, four years from now, it'll be one and a half Bitcoin. And then 0.781 and then 0.39, etc., etc. Until the year 2140, it will be zero Bitcoin. Let's hope we're all around 2140. I don't think we will be, but we can always hope. Who knows? And, and where is Bitcoin going? All right, this is a very, very simple having regression chart from charts BTC. And basically, 
it's saying 220 is on the cards if history repeats for this next cycle. 53 was the target for the last. Now, by the way, when it says 220K, that doesn't mean 220K is the top. That means it's the average expectation of the price of Bitcoin four years from now. Could we go a lot higher than 220 this cycle? The answer is yes, and that could be in the next year, year and a half. Could we languish around here forever? Perhaps, but it's very unlikely, and I'll spell that out with data too. By the way, post this cycle, 220K, again, four years from now, 690 after that. And again, massive vol volatility. So if 690 is the expectation, you know, for the next after next halving cycle, we could probably be hitting a million dollars by then too. Who knows? Either way, it's exciting. Now, what's also happening around the world, there's been a very rapid sense of urgency. The world is now wiser to what's going on. The same level of knowledge of currency debasement wasn't there five years ago, 10 years ago, and that's part of why Bitcoin was created. But Argentina, you can see here, Bitcoin purchases have reached their highest level in 20 months. They are stacking Bitcoin because they know their fiat is debasing by 270% a year. It is cataclysmic what's going on down there on the ground. And it's not just Argentina, it's many other places. It's happening in the US too on a smaller scale, as represented by this chart here. There's Bitcoin and there's everything else. This is the dollar losing its purchasing power. There's two green lines. Whoever put this chart together, <laughs> get some new colors. Anyway, the green line going down is the dollar debasement and the green line going up with the jagged edge is Bitcoin and the rest you don't really need to know about, but gold is in there too. And the consumer price index is in there as well. Now, I have shared this chart before, but this is kind of the chart that should rattle everybody. And it's the stock to flow. The stock to flow model for, uh, here is the dashed green line and it's used for Bitcoin valuation, and it's about to be cut in half in six hours. The gold inflation rate is about 2.3%. The Bitcoin inflation rate is going to go to about 0.8%. So it'll be three times, three times harder than gold, and gold is considered a hard asset. But there's a little secret to gold here as well, because again, as the price goes up, the miners dig a little bit deeper. So the supply will actually increase because gold is now over $2,000 an ounce. The cost to mine an ounce of gold is about 600 to 700 bucks. So they can do it profitably. The cost to mine Bitcoin is a lot more expensive and will become so too. In fact, I did a whole video yesterday on the miners and the status as to who's going to make it and who may not make it, but we'll see. Now, gold is not your hedge. Another reminder too, because there's lots of people out there shilling gold saying, oh, it's amazing. And they are excited because you can see the little peak of blue in the gold price. But when you zoom out over 45 years, 44 years, it tells a very horrifying story. This is gold price divided by money to money supply increase. Gold over M2, real simple chart. And gold bugs have lost 75% of their value in 44 years. Coincidentally, 44 years is typically what the average person works for their entire life. If you've been working for 44 years and you've been stacking gold, you've lost three quarters of your wealth. Put that in your gold pipe and smoke it. <laughs> I, sometimes I come out with weird things. I apologize for that. Anyway, let's talk about this. And I'm going to summarize this real quick. This is all my random thoughts. And shout out to Matt Haugen as well, who was inspiration for a little bit of this mind map and putting this together. He had the thesis that the Bitcoin halving is not priced in. I did the video on that topic about two weeks ago, but he has some very interesting things here. And he talks about the concept of Bitcoin having, the reducing the supply, cutting in half will support price increases. And he refers to the EMH, which is the efficient markets hypothesis. And it suggests that current Bitcoin price will reflect all known information, including the upcoming halving. But the truth of the matter is, it doesn't. <laughs> nobody, nobody can actually calculate the supply shock or the demand for this asset. Now, there are limitations as well, because future demand, future uncertainties cannot be figured out. But the truth is, the demand is increasing. This is now a bona fide asset. 
there are two types of sellers as well. There's the four sellers, which are the miners that need to sell some of their Bitcoin to pay for the electricity, etc. Their ability to sell has just been halved. And then there's the willing regular holders. We know 70% of Bitcoin is held by long-term holders. Many of them are never letting go. And we know 5 million Bitcoin are gone. So anyway, if you're interested in digging through all my thoughts, reverse the screen, pause it, and go through. Start at 12 noon and go around. That's where my, my logic brain works. Now, miners are a big part of the halving. That's why I did my miner video yesterday. But here, the halving is spurring the sunsetting of old rigs. And this is from Bloomberg Crypto. About 6,000 old mining machines will be idled, probably tens of thousands more than that, and sent to a warehouse in Colorado Springs where they'll be refreshed and resold to buyers overseas. And there are buyers overseas that have things like one cent electricity. They can make it happen because they're right beside a hydroelectric facility or something like that. And so these ones will not hit a landfill. I know TND Tesla was worried about that, but no. They're going to be repurposed. And again, they do work when you have super cheap electricity. Now, other interesting news too happening. Like twice within 72 hours, we know when Tether prints, when Tether prints, Bitcoin goes up. And Ivan is famous for saying that. But Tether minted $2 billion in 72 hours, which is fun. So expect some, some of this dollar that's newly created to go into the Bitcoin system. And of course, Tether is also buying a lot of Bitcoin with their profits from their 4.5% return that they get on their treasury bills. And they have $110 billion in treasury bills. So do the math, 110 billion times 85%. They have 5 billion a year to spend on Bitcoin. And that's just one buyer on top of the sailors and the ETFs and everything else. By the way, I'll break all the ETF stuff down in a minute. Now, other stuff I've been promising after the first 90 days, the RIAs, Sit back and watch. Is this thing worth investing in? Well, shout out to Hunter Horsley, double H, H2. Right now, countless RIAs and multifamily offices are buying Bitcoin and doing homework. They haven't jumped in with both feet yet, and they're being very secretive about it. And that's the weird thing that came from this article is you have all these firms Literally, it's kind of like a, the old thought is, you know, the old rifles, you start to put the is it the gunpowder in and then you put the little ball in and you pack it down. That's what they're doing the last 90 days. They're getting ready to shoot. And that shoot is to buy Bitcoin, but they're very secretive in how they do it. They don't want the world to know they're getting in. They want to sneak in quietly and grab it before the price goes up. Kind of like what Mr. 100's doing, who we'll talk about in a minute too. This is interesting, and we will be very surprised of who is going to buy Bitcoin over the next 90 days, and we'll see that in the 13F filings. Speaking of those, proof that RAs are putting their toe in the water, more 13Fs are rolling in. And the biggest one to date, both in size and allocation, is Quattro Advisors. This is based in uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, I think. They are an RIA, Registered Investment Advisor, and they bought $19 million worth of IBIT. It is their third biggest holding in their bag. And remember, the rest of their portfolio is a vanilla low-cost Vanguard ETF and a few blue chip stocks, aka this is what they call the, it's going to sound offensive, the Boomer Special. They cater to boomers, all right? It's a boomer portfolio sold by RIAs, and they are now 5% in Bitcoin. And they're just the first of many that are coming. So when you talk about that perpetual bid coming in for Bitcoin, it's going to happen, but there's a lot less of it right now. To prove how scarce this thing is, I ran some numbers this morning. This is Mr. 100, and I thought, well, how much have they bought so far in April last week? over the last 30 days and crunch the numbers, okay? And what's really startling is if you imagine we wind back the clock 30 days and we assume what's going to happen to Bitcoin issuance in six hours. So I'm assuming just for these calculations, issuance of 450 a day. And my question to myself was, how much is Mr. 100 buying? 
Okay, this gets really bonkers really fast. You can see here, over in April so far, they bought 5,463 Bitcoin, 19 days. That is 64% of the issuance of 450 a day. Last week, they bought 3,045 Bitcoin. That's 96.67% of the daily issuance. And the last 30 days, 65.53, call it 66%. They alone are buying two thirds. But the last week was interesting. It was kind of like a, a pre having run, a visual of what that looks like. Again, focus on the just last week. They bought pretty much all the daily issuance. Will Mr. 100 continue? And I keep getting questions, okay? I did an entire video on the mysterious Mr. 100, and I keep getting, oh, well, it's a it's a cold wallet from a centralized exchange. No, it's not, because I've analyzed all the cold wallets from all the centralized exchanges. And they do not behave like this wallet, okay? Let me explain. I have repeated again, because people keep forgetting, or maybe they missed the video. Regular st stacking habits... They, the buys accelerate as the price dips. That's DCAS, dollar cost averaging on steroid behavior. They buy in 100 Bitcoin increments. Nobody does this. Nobody. They diverge from typical pattern. This is a stacker. I am 99% sure of that. We'll see. We'll find out in due course. Now, uh, Pomp was on, is on TV, I think, every day now. Uh, again, he was on CNBC, I think. CMBS, and he believes Bitcoin could get to the one hundred and fifty dollars to $200,000 range. But I don't think people should expect an explosive 1,000% move from here, though, for the rest of the bull market. Again, pretty bullish sign. That is Pomp's expectation. Who knows where we get there? If, I mean, we, we I keep on saying this, but we're going into the first ever diminishing availability of Bitcoin with demand that is through the roof, like we've never seen before. Now, speaking of the opposite of demand, dumbage, Grayscale has halved the day before the halving. We did say we expected it to happen, and it happened. So they went from 621,000 Bitcoin on January 11th, if my memory serves me right, to 307,000. Over half is gone in 68 trading days. Let's look at some of the uh, Bitcoin black hole. And it's important to track these trends. And I have a brand new chart too. Day 68 raw numbers. The in th interesting thing to see is we only were down minus 4.3 million. So we saw some good buying coming in from Fidelity, from BlackRock. Not a big buy from BlackRock, but good enough. Nearly 40 million from Fidelity. BITB, 13 million. ARK back, nearly 10 million. They almost almost outweighed the dumpage from grayscale we'll talk about that in a minute too but this was another question i had to myself it's like okay how much were they buying per day on average per fund and this is interesting these numbers are pretty huge the average flow per day fidelity 121 million ibit blackrock 224 million that's a quarter of a billion dollars a day for 68 days flowing into blackrock and blackrock never had a down day i don't think fidelity had either uh, and grayscale was dumping 245 million a day quarter of a billion so basically blackrock almost almost bought all of the dumpage from grayscale but that will change in the very near future where blackrock will far surpass the size of grayscale and grayscale will probably wither away but what's interesting is the average for all of these is 181 million now the breakdown of what that means that was millions of dollars what that is in terms of bitcoin per day the average bitcoin per day into fidelity over 68 days is 2242 all right blackrock 4017 and we had Grayscale dumping 4,621 a day. Grayscale is dumping 10 times the daily issuance in six hours a day over the last 68 days. But the good news is BlackRock is buying <laughs> nearly eight, nine times the actual issuance. Will that continue? I don't know. Of course, it's going to slow down. But with these RIAs coming in, hmm. We'll find out. Here is the macro update. You can see Grayscale, green up, and all the others popping up too. Thank you, Piper and Jimmy, for coming. 
We got people from all over the world. And we had a slightly negative day, nearly at break even, which is a very positive sign going into the halving. It's not like the ETFs have given up the ghost of Bitcoin. Uh-uh, not at all, which is also positive. Money flow, flat. But the overall trend still down, but we expect some post. I think the next month could be super interesting post having, and we're going to see the first signs of what it's like if there's a supply crunch and that supply crunch will come if Coinbase is not being dumped 4,300 Bitcoin a day from Grayscale. And if the other ETFs continue to buy, where are they going to get their Bitcoin? That's the moment I'm waiting for, and it's going to be exciting. $36.6 billion into the nine new ETFs, and 531,500 Bitcoin in the new ETFs. And finally, this is so bizarre. Net per day, we had 68 Bitcoin added to the system yesterday. 68. You cannot make this up. The, the the coincidence of numbers is bonkers. It is day 68, trading day 68 of the ETFs, and 68 Bitcoin were added back. Unbelievable. And these numbers are calculated from the average price during the day of Bitcoin. Can't make this up. Anyway, I thought that was interesting. Meaningless, but interesting. Now, Bitcoin chart time. This is super exciting, too. If you weren't bullish, you will be after this chart. Thank you, Richard, for coming, too in the United Kingdom. So this is the alligator, Williams alligator indicator. It's a bit of a mouthful, but the chart consists of, and it's a monthly chart as well. If you want to, you can build this at home yourself. It's three moving averages, real simple. So you have the blue line and that's a 13 period, 13 month moving average. And it's moved into the future as well. You've got the red line, eight period, eight month moving average. And I think I can't I sometimes get this wrong. The blue is the jawline of the alligator. The teeth is the red line and the <laughs> green line is the lips. <laughs> I didn't even know an alligator had lips. I can't make this. Anyway, uh, it's, it's a weird indicator, but it's super interesting because it only happens once every four year cycle for Bitcoin, right? The, uh, the green line, by the way, is the five month issue. So now when the lines start to separate, this is what they call the awakening alligator. And this 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 uh, was done by a guy called Williams who's been making TA charts for 40 or 50 years. Really, really good person on the TA side. If the jars start to separate with the green line, the lips crossing above the red teeth and the blue jaw lines, it suggests the alligator is waking up. And this signals the start of a very bullish trend it just began. So if you look at the white dots that circle in when the, the alligator mouth opens, it awakens. That's exactly what happens in confluence with Bitcoin halving cycles. It's just begun to open up right now. So this uh, I tested this um, indicator as well on other assets. And when it happens, it's bullish. Oh, by the way, this is from the Titan of crypto. So thank you for sharing. This is really, really good observation. So we are going up from here. No ifs, ands, and buts. And this, this indicator is very rarely wrong. And it's perfect for Bitcoin too. Now, another view as well of how the gainers come after the halving. History, da-da, no surprise there. The white is the halving line. And after the price goes up, there can be a week or two of slowdown, like back in 20, 2016, 2015. I think right after the halving, we had we were down for about two weeks. So we could this time around be weak for 30 days. But the players are different. The money is different. We never had this before in a previous cycle where this people spending five billion dollars in like a matter of months on Bitcoin. Never happened before. We had retail investors dropping a hundred a week or 200 bucks a month, but nothing like the money coming in right now too. And rumor has it, Michael Saylor might be buying for his personal bag too. We shall see. And another indicator that's super interesting too, is a breakdown of how the long-term holder spending is slowing. I covered this yesterday, but it's a brand new chart from Check on Chain, from Checkmatey uh, on Twitter. And here you can see that 
when the long-term holder spending starts to slow, the price starts to pump. So we have some good times ahead. And the final chart for you all today, the day of the halving, is this. A lot of people think we're topping out. And I, again, I started the video saying this, people packing their bags, going home, they're thinking, okay, that's it. We made it to 73. Bitcoin's over. It's dead. The ETFs aren't buying anymore. No, 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 no. Let's check this as well from Check on Chain. You can see as well here, when the red peaks and hits the orange mountains, okay, it's over. It's when the top heavy short term holders are in loss. And when you see that, it is over. Right now, the short term holders are not in loss. They're very much in profit. And we are very, very far away from hitting the yellow. So I added a little green graphic there saying, nope, it's not over. So the bears can go back to migration for another while, but we'll be on top of things here. When we start getting bubbly and hot, I'll be the one, first one to pull the ejector seat. Trust me, for you all. So don't forget to subscribe. And finally, this is another cool piece of data that you may want to see. This is the Bitcoin unrealized profits for on-chain all cohorts. We have the old whales that are up 223%. We have the new whales, the TradFi and the ETFs. They're only up 1.6%. And the small miners up 130%. Big miners up 81%. So this is not enough profit. The All these major hodlers, these cohorts, are not in enough profit to even consider dumping at this stage. There's a lot more of this bull market to go, is basically the message from this, from CryptoQuant. Thank you so much, everybody, for coming. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe. Uh, and the weekends, as I analyzed before, are typically extremely good for Bitcoin, barring any, you know what, geopolitical tensions, which we've had to, but stunning, absolutely stunning, the rebound, and people in Patreon know exactly what I did last night when this happened, almost to the penny. So anyway, let's have a good weekend, everybody. We deserve one. Happy having day, and thank you all for coming. Hit the like and the way out. Thank you to the mods in chat, and everybody for coming. Bye-bye.